Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Wee Knives Riff Raff, designed by Matthew Christensen, which is a name I'm sure many of you are familiar with. Thank you so much to my patrons for supporting me. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. And thanks so much to Wee Knives for sending this in for me to take a look at. This knife is available in a few different configurations. I will link it right down in the description under this video. It does help my channel when you use those links, but that is entirely up to you. Let's go ahead and get a measurement. Not a huge knife, about seven and a quarter inches overall. Blade length coming in at three inches and cutting edge also coming in at almost exactly three inches. I think the blade length's a little more. Just a hair, it's like three and a sixteenth. How about some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. You can see here it's definitely closer to the length of the Rat 2. It's just a little taller in blade profile. How about up against the Civivi Elementum? How about up against the Demco, whoops, AD 20.5? How about up against the CJRB Pyrite? It's another good one. Maybe the Benchmade Bug Out. And last but not least, I think maybe the Spyderco Para 3 is another similarly sized knife. Um, how's the action? It's okay. It kind of makes me think of like... So here recently, Wee Knives, a lot of the newer designs right out of the box have been a little bit smoother. This guy's a little tighter out of the box and it certainly will deploy and it's consistent. It just feels a little bit tight. It's got a nice detent, right? I am certain that this will break in over time. I'm just not... I'm not sure exactly how luxuriously smooth it's ever going to feel, but you know, a, a drop of 10 weight nano oil goes a long way, and especially you know, a break in period of anywhere from a few days to a few weeks also goes a long way. So my experience is that this one feels a little bit tight out of the box. It has not broken in yet. It probably will. I just don't know. You know, here lately I've experienced some knives from Wii that are exceptionally smooth. Like my, not just like, oh wow, it's Wii's finally, you know, releasing knives that feel smooth but feel like they're properly tuned. Now, I've, I've handled some stuff that's been, been like, wow, what are they doing, right? So this apparently didn't get the exact same treatment, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. It, 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 could, it could definitely get better. I think the thumb studs are in a decent spot. Um, you know, you can obviously reverse flick it or thumb flick it out, right? It does what it's supposed to do. Nothing more, nothing less. Sorry, I didn't actually state this, but the knife does run on bearings. So, uh, anyways, let's do carry profile up against the uh, Spyderco Pair 3. You can see it's actually a little bit thinner and it's contoured, which is kind of neat. Length and height up against the PM2 and the Para 3. You can see this guy is almost identical in body length to the Spyderco Pair 3. Not quite as tall. It does get pretty tall in that area right here. Not quite as tall as the Para 3. Nowhere near the same length or height as, as the PM2. Uh, honestly, you know, your carry experience is going to be pretty good. It, it really pretty much disappears in the pocket. I mean, it's a, it's not a tiny knife, but it's small enough that you're not really going to notice it, you know, in a way that would bother you throughout your day. Uh, let's go ahead and weigh it. So what are we looking at for materials? We're looking at titanium and CPM 20 CV, which is, we see that a lot. Weight coming in at 3.49 ounces. So pretty good, pretty good ratios if you care about that. Uh, balance is probably a little bit, no, you know what? It's actually very well balanced. It's right behind the pivot. A lot of material in the blade. Um, let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness here real quick. Blade stock, I'm going to guess that's 115 to 120. Nope, it's actually closer to 125,000. So pretty pretty standard for Wii knives, I guess. Is there anything else I feel? Oh, yeah, of course, the hardware check. Let's get on my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. It's also, I don't mention this enough, it's the pinned comment. If you go to the comment section, I pin the same comment every single time. That first one is my Amazon link with my tools in it. Pivots a T8, lock bar insert screws a T8, body screws T8, all of a T8 across the board. Fantastic. Wee does a good job of that. Two screws on each side. I call that minimal hardware. Should be very easy to take apart and put back together. As long as you have the right tools for the job, you should be good to go. All righty. This does, you know, initially I didn't look at this and go, that's a Matthew Christensen design, but then looking at it and, you know, in hindsight handling his other stuff, 
you go, oh, yeah, okay, it kind of, it's, it, it, there's some, it, like, I can't really put my finger on it, but it's, it, it's the way with a lot of makers, right? It's not in the same way that you can put your finger on a Laconico and say, that's a Laconico, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, you kind of, you kind of can see it. Um, I do appreciate his design work. I think that ergonomically for a smaller knife, this is fairly comfortable. I do like the contouring, the chamfered edges, right? Pocket clip is milled, follows the curvature of the handle. Everything looks to be the same style. Not a whole lot going on with the, uh, the handle. There's a couple of little lines here and that's pretty much it. We get a fat pivot collar, which is definitely something that he likes to do. I think that looks really nice. In this case, it's just bronze. I think they, Maybe on some of the other ones, I make it something different, but I, I think it would have been really cool to do the pivot collar because it's so wide to make it something different, to make it a different color, right? Make it black or something like that, uh, or make it shiny, right? Kind of like the rest of these screws. That would have been cool, but okay. Um, yeah, there's, I mean, there's really just not a whole lot to say here. There's plenty of access to the lock bars, no double clutch or anything like that. I do like the little thumb ramp here. I think that's fine. Uh, they did a good job of keeping a lot of the branding off of the blade, right? We just have Christensen Knife Works' logo on the back, and then we have We on the pivot, which is nice. The black and the bronze looks pretty good. They have a stonewashed one. They have a blue one. It's kind of typical, like, We knife color options. Um, I just wish that there was more going on on, you know, the scales here. There's just not a lot. I mean, the, the heat-treated hardware looks all right. It's just... I feel like I've seen this configuration in a We knife about a thousand times. Um, so there's really nothing that we is doing here to accentuate Matthew Christensen's work. Um, I want to say this. I I've heard now from multiple designers, and so I, I don't know that this is absolutely true. I've just heard it multiple times. It wouldn't surprise me at all. I don't think it's that hard of a thing to believe. The designer of the knife has basically, at least when it, I, I think at least when it comes to Wii knives, this is just speculation, by the way. They have like no control over the pricing. So, um, and we're going to get to the price, but I just want to say that. I, and if they have no control of the pricing, it leads me to believe that there are other things that they have no control over. Like a lot of times how their designs are translated, right? I think We Knives and other major production companies, and this, I mean, it makes sense. Like they, it's part of their business model. They have to go, how do we take this and make a Wii version of it and then make money off of it, you know, based on the number that we're going to make, Right. And a lot of times it turns into an oversimplification of the design and then a, you know, an unrealistic markup. Not all the time, but sometimes. And I feel like just based on the number of times that I've heard this, I just, I feel like I, I, I kind of want to defend designers, you know, because I think a lot of people might think, oh, the designer like obviously is like making extra and they're marking it way I don't think the designers have control over that. Not in every case, right? In the case, especially, you know, here with Wii Knives, I think they have basically zero control over it. Uh, just speculating, just basing off what I've heard from now five or six <laughs> different designers. So I just want to, I want to throw that out there. Blade Chip is cool, kind of gives me that arrowhead you know, kind of, it's just like an elongated, I mean, I don't know if you really want to call this like a Persian harpoon. I don't know. I'm making up, I'm making stuff up now, right? Whatever you want to call it. Modified drop point, right? With a harpoon notch or whatever. It's got a flat that is fairly prominent and runs at about 65% the length of the blade. Nice big swedge. It's comes down to actually a fairly reasonably, you know, a fairly reasonable, uh, I mean, it, uh, cutting edge is what I was trying to say there. It doesn't start off ultra thick to begin with it's lifting the edges of the paper a little bit it's not an it's not a perfectly clean slice but it is it's good enough i mean as far as like everyday tasks it's still biting in there you can see those little teeny weenies right it'll do it it'll definitely poke that's for sure comes down to a pretty nice a fairly fine point there uh moving on here we have a little bit of a it's almost kind of like reminds me of a dragon spine backspacer I'm not sure that it's going to provide any meaningful traction, but it looks all right. Again, I think it certainly would have looked better had they applied more of a polished, you know, bronze finish to it. This thing, I think it would have gone a long ways to do the pivot collar and the same finish as the hardware and same with the backspacer. Just make it a shinier, more polished, lighter bronze to contrast. When you have this sort of deep, earthy bronze and it's everywhere, 
there's just it's just kind of blah. It's just there's not much to look at because everything is just kind of blending together. There's no lanyard hole, but who cares, right? I mean, I know some of you care. I know there's like four of you left on the planet. I don't care. Most people don't care. I mean, I know I'm not basing this on a lot. I'm just basing it off of literally 85 to 100,000 comments per year. Let me tell you, I'm saying that there are four people left and I am not far off. (laughs) I may have been making that joke for years and I'm telling you, the number of people who actually care is pretty close to four, right? And those four people, they get offended every time. They're like, hey, there's more of us than you think. And I'm like, there's less of you than you think. <laughs> All right, okay. All right. Anyways, pocket clip, pretty simple. It's milled, has a nice ramp to it. It's straight. That's a little pointy. These are not sharp, right? No mounting position for lefties. Sorry, lefties. They just We just didn't do it that time. In and out of the pocket is fine. Uh, very easy uh, because of no texturing and it's contoured, right? We have a uh, steel lock bar into the double assist, the over treble stop. So that's great. We have a little bit of shouldering. Uh, we've got the stop pin located in its traditional place. No blade play up, down, left to right. We knives doesn't generally have a problem with that. Uh, no pivot lash. It's smooth and, and it's consi- Well, let me say it's tight, right? So you can feel it <laughs> kind of the chalky. Thing. I imagine this will smooth in. That's that detent ball wearing its track into the into the face of the blade tang, or what we would call the tang, I guess. It's wearing it into the, the unseen face of the blade around the pivot. This will smooth out, and again, a drop of 10 weight nano oil will go a long ways. I've got that stuff down in the uh, my, my Amazon store that's in the pinned comment there. Real nice detent, feels great, and it is centered. Uh, I'll, these are 258. Uh, Wee Knives, what are you doing with the pricing? No. Uh, this is a, this is a very straightforward design, and there's nothing wrong with the design. The design is pretty decent, right? It's pretty cool. Uh, has Matthew Christensen, you know, the, it's got the aesthetic there. Um, and there are a lot of people who really like this look. There's really, I mean, it's ergonomic, it's functional, the thumb studs are in the right place. He, Matthew knows how to design a knife. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a little bit on the planer end, but again, I would imagine Weave's involvement with that is, you know, more so, right? I mean, if, maybe if it was up to Matthew, we would have more dramatic finishes, more dramatic this or that. Uh, but we has like subdued this thing into like it, it's very it's very simple, um, and that's okay if they apply the right price tag. But they want too much money for it. This is too much. It's too basic, right? You got, you, sometimes they drop special edition knives with absolutely wild things going on and they charge, you know, 300 for them. And some of those are justified, but this should be, uh, I mean, I, I, I would put, you know, this feels like 200 bucks. I mean, there are plenty of companies out there that, in fact, every day I'm uh, introduced to a new company who can essentially do the exact same thing as we knives for way less money. Um, so no, this is way too expensive. Nothing wrong with the design. The design is functional. If you love the design and you look at that price tag and you think, okay, where I really want it, I just want to know, is it made well? Is it designed well? Yeah, sure. Fine. It's not my favorite thing in the whole world, but it's definitely designed well. It's a simple sandwich construction titanium frame lock. CPM 20 CV running on bearings, right? It's got a little bit of a unique blade profile. There's not not a whole lot here to, to talk about. It's just a straightforward, decent design. Uh, we Knives just wants too much money for it, which has just been a common theme for a while, right? So this is a pass for me. I'll, I mean, it's linked down below, as per usual. You can go click that link and buy the knife, and I'll make money off of it. But I think you should look in different places. I think, again, in Wee's own line, like if you're going to go there, Take some time to look around and, and look at Wii's other stuff. Because they have, inexplicably, they have other things in their line that cost substantially less. Not just utilizing the same materials, but also executed the same way. The same size of knives. It's just like, just because. Like this knife, if you were to ask them, like, why does this cost more? Well, because. Because we decided to make it cost more. I don't, sh- I don't think there's anything specific attached to it, right? So... So I want to be clear, design fine, price no, right? So that's going to be pretty much it today. I don't know if there's really a whole lot more for me to say there. Please, 
Make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.